Welcome to part two of our series on the self. And like I was mentioning last week, we talked about a Hebrew view of the self, an ancient Greek view, and we talked about some Native American views of the self, um, especially highlighting and focusing on different temperament and personality types. But this year, I mean, this week, I thought we would go to the East and we're going to look at a completely different worldview than the Hebrews or the Greeks had. And um, I think to start off, I need to make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to worldviews. So let me pull up my images. This will help kind of orientate us to different worldviews. And I thought this was a fairly helpful chart. So if we go all the way over here to the left, we have the universe but there is no God. We simply have nature or the cosmos. And that would be an atheistic or a materialistic view. And we will talk about that particular view of the self next week. <clears throat> this week, we're going to be talking about a pantheistic view of the self. And this pantheism literally means it's the Greek word pan, which means all or the world. And Theos, theo, which means God. So it literally means all is God or God is all. So there is a direct equivalence to the universe and God. In fact, you can use those words interchangeably. Deism is this concept that there is a God, a creator God who made the universe, but this God is separate or detached from the universe. Um, this is what we would normally call classic theism, would be this dualism, where you do have a God who is spiritual, but you also have a physical material universe, but God is engaged with or interacting with this universe, unlike the detached view of deism. This is kind of like the blind watchmaker concept, where God constructs the universe and sets it into motions with laws of nature, but then he's pretty much absent. This isn't the type of God you pray to or worship. This type of God, however, is because this God is interacting with the world. And then this last piece I want you to become aware of, if you're not already, is the term panentheism. So we have all, and this little N here means N, God, or it can also be switched to God is in all. So here we actually have the universe nestled within God. And out of all of these views, I personally think this one is the most accurate. And that may be a new concept for you. This has great problems philosophically and theologically and often leads to this view of deism. But like I said, tonight we're going to talk about all the groups we're going to talk about tonight fall under this pantheistic view of God, where God and the universe are one and the same. Any questions, comments on any of those illustrations? What I like about this last picture is you have the universe nestled in God. It's not like it's existing separate or outside of God but they also make a clear distinction that the universe is not God. Here, there is no such distinction. So even though these two words are very close, they are philosophically radically different. <clears throat> 